what's going on guys this is Amir from Backbrace channel hope you're all doing well um, I've got a Django project for you today so uh, lately I've posted that video and I said that I'm not going to take any time off and that um, possibly I'm going to post a video each two weeks and we're going to concentrate from now on on backend slash full stack web application projects and that's what we're going to start with today and for today's tutorial I've got a voting system for you it's going to be a web application we're going to work only with Django framework even for the front end side we're not going to employ JavaScript uh, front end frameworks like react or Vue, but we're going to write those HTML pages using the Django template language and that's very similar to Jinja in flask or Jinja 2 in flask and that's basically HTML, but with some special symbols. If you're not familiar with Jinja or Django template language, you might go ahead and check out my Flask and Django crash courses. I've explained everything and I've given a lot of examples on that. Um, and you can see on the screen here that we have our project. That's obviously the, the project that I've prepared. So I wanted to show you the tree of uh, the whole project. So you can see that um, here, this is the, the project, the main project, and we will have our main application. We will have two applications basically, but that's the main one. That's for uh, the landing page. I'm going to show you that later in, in the tutorial, in this video and uh, the project obviously, right? And we will have also the templates, um, pages, partials and polls. All of that, uh, all of these are uh, some folders uh, and inside each of those we have some HTML pages which are written in the Django template language. Okay and let me go ahead and give you a little demonstration. Let's activate the, vir the virtual environment by typing pipnv shell. That's already activated. Perfect. And let's go to project and let's do python manage dot by run server and as you can see the server is running on the local host 127.0.0.1 on port 8000 that's the default port for any Django project let's click on that and you can see here that we have our um, welcome page that's the home page basically we have a very simple nav bar uh, with the palm all if you will click that you just redirect you to the home page or the welcome page and we have a button here um, it says view available polls so if you'll click on that we will have different questions so this is the basic layout for that so we have poll questions and you got your questions and all of these questions by the way are to be entered by the admin through the admin dashboard so we're going to create super user with login and password and uh, through the, the dashboard or the admin dashboard you're going to add questions modify questions we will not have modify actually we can add and delete questions um, and that's a good point because you can actually improve upon that application you can add that functionality to uh, edit whatever question that you want to edit whether in the question itself or the choices so let's go ahead and see what's your favorite programming language so let's do vote now so python ruby java let's say python let's hit vote and we can see these are the results of the poll so python four votes ruby one vote java one vote you can vote again if you want or you can get back to the polls um what was your first computer? You can say vote now. Atari 800 Excel, Commodore 64, Sinclair, and Sakhar. Sakhar, it was a very famous computer in the 80s and the 90s in the Middle East. But back then when I was a kid, I didn't get Sakhar. I got Atari 800 Excel. So if I will say Atari 800 Excel, vote to that. You can see that these are the results. Six for Atari 800 Excel, one for Commodore, one Sinclair, and one Sakhar. You can vote again or you can get back to the polls you can click here to get back to the welcome page and that's basically it this is our web application that we're going to be coding today in our tutorial and if you're new here to the channel thank you so much for stopping by i would ask you please to subscribe to my channel and hit that notification bell to get more of those tutorials if you like my content and if you're interested in those um, types of applications and tutorials basically 
And before we get started, I would like to thank each and every one of you guys who have been supporting me lately. Thank you so much for all of the comments, the love you're showing to the channel, everything basically that you're doing to the channel to grow bigger and bigger, all right? I can't thank you enough. And with that being said, let's go ahead and start coding our voting system application using Django Framework. All right, welcome back. So the first thing that I want to do here is to create a folder. I'm going to go to um, the main folder where I want to create my project. And I'm going to create that folder, I will call it voting underscore system. Change the directory to that voting system. Then let's go ahead and activate the, the virtual environment by using PPNV shell command, you can use venv if you want. There are different ways in Python to uh, create a virtual environment for your project. But pipnv is fairly simple, you can install it if you don't have it by pip install pipnv. And once that installed, you can activate it by typing pipnv shell. Right, creating a pip file for this project launching um, subshell in vi virtual environment. And then the virtual environment is um, active now. So uh, control L to clear the terminal. Now what I want to do is to install Django also inside our project. So you might want to do pip install uh, Django. But for the purpose of this um, tutorial, I'm going to install it via pip and install Django because you know we want it in our inside our folder in our virtual environment. So it's going to install it solely on this folder. And um, once Django is installed, we can go ahead and just increase that a little bit like that. And now we can go ahead and uh, we can establish a Django project. So we can do Django dash admin start start project and i'm going to call the name of my project poll project it's going to be poll dash project that's the main project okay uh we cannot insert hyphen or any symbols should be just one word so let's do poll project like that all right, and now let's check out what we have. So we have poll project, the pip file, and the pip file.log. So uh, let's go to poll project. And we have, um, so we have only that. So inside here, we will need to create our main application. And in order to do that, I'm going to do python manage.py. Um, start app. And like I created the poll project, main project, I'm going to call our application poll app. So we have poll project and poll app. Perfect. As you can see, we have the poll app, poll project and manage.py. All right, perfect. Um, let's now go ahead just to check out if everything is working. Okay, manage.py run server. And let's go. So we have 18 unapplied migrations, we're going to migrate now. No problem. And we have our Django project working. Okay, so let's minimize that for now. Let's uh, kill the server by control C. All right. And now we can open our project using Visual Studio Code. All right, so the first thing that I want to do is to go to settings.py and add the name of the application in the installed apps list here. So my app is called poll app. That's very important configuration um, step. Let me shut settings.py for now. And let's go ahead and open our models.py file. So in models.py, we're going to create two tables here uh, for our database. And that's the main purpose of the um, of the models.py file is just to write your 
database statements and then we will do the migrations and inside that migrations folder we will have um, when we'll do the migration we'll have triple zero one dot pi I need two tables basically right uh, we will need one for the question and one for the choice so from django.db import models that's fine uh, let me just delete that all right and let's do um, question class so we'll do class question that's here models dot model and uh, first variable I need question text that's the the question text right so models dot um, character field and we'll have a maximum length let's define that to be 200 that's the the maximum length of characters I don't think that we will have more than that question text right let, let's do 300 that's okay no big deal also I want the publishing date so pub date and that is going to take the models dot date time field that's a date time field and here I'm going to write date published okay then inside our class I will need the constructor function so the stir function of course so uh, here only will take self and it will return self dot that question text that oops, I forgot the oh, question All right, so that's the first class. The second class is going to concern the choice. So choice also models.model. Uh, now I need question. So that question again is going to take the models. And the question here is going to be the foreign key, right? So we have primary keys, we have foreign keys in database management systems. So that question right here is going to be the foreign key which is the linker uh, from one table to the other, right? So that is the question table. Um, we're going to utilize it actually by using the foreign key method. Inside the foreign key, I need the first. So as you can see here, the foreign key, I need that. Um, I need the question class basically. And also, I need to tell database that on delete, I need to cascade that decision to delete everything. So if I'm going to delete, uh, let's say question, so I will need to delete the question and the choices associated with that question. So on delete models dot cascade. All right, so that's as far as the question for the choices class. I also want choice text. So models dot character field and let's give it max length of 200. Right, not more than that. And then the votes uh, are going to be integers, obviously. So models dot um, integer not choice integer field right and here the default is going to be zero initially um, we will have zero votes okay and also I need that uh, oops self and I'm going to return self dot choice text right so here I want to return the question text and here I want to return the choice text, right? Hope this is clear for you guys. So let's do that. And let's do now Python manage dot pi. Oops, uh, where are we? Uh, we are in pull project. Yeah, okay. So Python manage dot pi make migrations. Again, if you don't know that, you might want to check out my Django crash course. And that's the card, you can click here and it will take you to the Django crash course. 
but for now I want to enter the name of my application which is poll app and that's going basically to uh, do the migrations right so we had create model question and create model choice and as you can see here we have triple zero one initial as I told you so if we will click here we'll click here so you can see here that uh, the dependencies so we have two um, two different uh, models so we have the choice and the question with the different fields for each table right we didn't try that it's Django out of the box SQLite tool that took our our code here in models.py and turned it into proper um, SQL statements all right but we are not done yet we need to insert these tables in our database so to do that I'm going to do python manage.py migrate that's going basically to um, insert all these tables that we have created in our database so yeah you can see that everything is okay here and we don't have any errors okay so congratulations we have created tables and we have inserted them in our database the next step is to create the admin user so let me just shut that let me again open the integrated terminal clear or you can do cls or you can do control l to clear the terminal let's close the explorer so what i want to do now is to do python manage.py create super user right so that's the user that we're going to create in order to um, gain access to the admin dashboard so we'll need to have uh, a username uh, email address the password and all of that so python manage.py create super user hit enter now username we can leave blank to use emir so i will leave a blank uh, we can say emir at um, xyz.com right that's not a correct uh, email by the way and password one two three one two three right so password is too short must contain at least eight characters password is too common entirely numeric so that's a very bad password never do one two three but as this is a demonstration for uh, admin dashboard for Django so no problem we'll do yes super user created successfully let's go ahead now and run the server so here in the bar uh, you can add forward slash admin right you can do amir123 login and boom so that's simply it we didn't do anything yet so welcome amir and you know groups users we will add the functionality now to add questions add choices and so on and now let me go to admin.py so let's do one like so now what i want to do is to map each question with choices to select right so we'll write the code here to uh, basically change the site header the title and all of that um so let me just delete this from django.contrib from django.contrib import admin i also want from um you can see here from uh, models i want to import the question and the choice class so from uh, models i want to import question and choice um, next i want to do admin dot site dot i want the site header i will call it the poll mall not the cigarette right um, but i'm going to call it like that uh, the poll mall admin dot site dot site title title um we'll say something like voting admin area okay so admin dot site dot index um, underscore title 
we'll say something like welcome to our voting admin area. So now we can add questions and choices for the question from the admin panel. To do that, I'm going to create a class. I'm going to call it choice in line, in line like that. And that's going to take admin dot tabular in line. Uh, tabular in line. And then the model, I'm going to assign it to our choice class from the models.py. We're going to give it only three choices. And we're going to give it three choices only. So extra three. That's the number of choices for each question. I also want to create another class. I'm going to call it question admin, admin.model admin. And here I need to the field sets, uh, field sets. So uh, we'll open a list and inside here, none. Then uh, we have fields. So the field is going to be mapped to the question text. So question uh, underscore text. So that's the first tuple. The second tuple we will have um, the date. So date information, and we will have um, a dictionary. So dictionary like that, and that um, key value pair. So the key is fields, and the value here will have the pub date pub underscore date and also classes oops, classes is mapped toward collapse like that and here don't forget the comma otherwise you will get an error so these are both classes that will need the choice in line so we will have the choices and the question admin so these are the settings for the question that you as the administrator will have to enter. And by the way, I need to declare a variable, I will call it inlines and that's going to uh, take the choice or to be assigned to choice inline class. And by the way, I will need a variable, I'm going to call it inlines and I'm going to assign the choice inline class here to that variable inside the list, right? So choice in line. And finally here admin.site.register that's very important. And here I will pass the question and the question admin. Right? So we are connecting both together. So in um, let me just open here. Let's check that again. Let's go to Let's just close that. Let's open the admin. And boom, you can find here poll app. We have questions, right? We can add question. So here we have the question texts. We have three choices, right? So we can do, for instance, who is faster, tiger, the rabbit, or the turtle, right? Now, when you will click on save and add another, you will have to fill the these two uh, fields, right, the date and the time. So I'm going to click on today and now and we are good to go. We can save and uh, we have here who is faster. That's the question. So the question who is faster was added successfully. Perfect. So far, so good. The next step, we will need to create the views for our application coming up next. All right, welcome back. So we will create now the view of our application that basically is going to fetch the data from our database and will render the data in the template. And as I said, I'm not going to use React or Vue or any other um, JavaScript framework. We're going to use our HTML templates for that. So I will need to create templates folder uh, just outside here and in, in the main project folder. I'm going to create templates folder. 
All right, so we will create that templates folder and the files inside that folder is going to be uh, later on, not right now. Um, but for now, I want to open views.py file. So let's open uh, views.py file here and just close that. And now let's write some code. So let me delete this. So from django.shortcuts will import the render. And by the way, I will need also um, get object or 404. That class will need it here. Let me just minimize this a little bit. From django.http, I want to import the response. So HTTP, HTTP response, this one. Oops, I don't need all that. I also want the HTTP response redirect. Uh, I don't know why it's like that. Okay, hold on. Um, is this affecting HTTP? I think it's affecting. Okay, let's delete that again. HTTP response. Uh, response, that's the one. Okay. It's still inaccessible. Okay. And also the HTTP response redirect. Uh, oops. Re redirect that one. Um, also, I want the loader for the templates so from Django.template. I want to import the loader. I want also to import reverse for URLs from Django.urls. Import reverse. I hover over that. It's again inaccessible, all of those inaccessible for now, but once we will insert them in our code, they will be highlighted and uh, yeah, hopefully we will not get any errors. And also from um, models here, I will need to import the question and the choice. So. Uh, oops. All right, so the first function is going to be uh, created to get questions and display those questions. I'm gonna call it index and it's going to take a request as input. And I need the latest question in the questions list. So latest question list. It's going to take the question class. And uh, we're going to order by the pub date, but we will do it in reverse. So we'll add minus pub date. So question dot objects dot a method called order by and that's here we have the pub date, right, but we want it negative to get the latest one in the list. And of course, the, the context, so context here um, in the dictionary with one key value pair for that latest question list. So latest question underscore list. Let me copy that like this. And we will return render the request, obviously. And that route polls index.html. That's going to be created in templates. So here, context, context. All right, this is the first function. The second function to show the specific question and choices. So showing or show question and choices for that question. So for this page, I'm going to call it detail.html, like here index.html, the page uh, for the question and choices, I'm going to call it detail.html. So 
it's convenient to call the function on the name of the, the page. So again, it's going to take request, but also the question ID because each question has an ID in our database. And then after I'm gonna get question. So question here with the question class objects dot get and the primary key is the question ID, right? But what if the question doesn't exist? So for that, I'm going to wrap question here and try accept code block. So accept question dot does not exist method. I'm going to raise um, H TTP 404, right? And uh, this one is going to display question does not exist, right? And I don't know why it's complaining here. HTTP is not defined. But um, yeah, we need to render um, request as first parameter, obviously. And again, um, polls. So here we had where here we had index.html. And as I told you, I'm going to call the second page detail.html. So yeah, question is, uh, oops, this is question. Um, I honestly don't know why this is complaining. There are even those HTTP error 401. Okay, let me check quickly in Google Chrome. So let's check again. Um, oh, I will need to import that. Honestly, I thought it's implicitly Im uh, imported from the HTTP here. Right, so we'll need to do that differently. Now, if we'll do HTTP 404, that should work. All right. The next function that I want is a function that is going to get the question and display the results. So get question and display results. So I'm going to call it results and it takes requests and I'll say the question ID question ID. All right. Now I have a first variable that's called question and here get object or 404 then the question class and then the um, primary key is again the question ID. That's mainly the question. Um, then we will render that by using the request as first parameter, of course, but from the polls folder, I need the results.html file. And again, question. This is the context, right? So question is equal to question. Uh, what? Okay. All right, perfect. Uh, now I need the vote for a question choice. So I need a function called vote basically. Okay, so I'm going to call it vote. It takes request again and question ID as always. And here I want to, um, I want actually to, let's do, let's print, hmm, let's print what I want to, okay. Let's again define that um, variable called function. Again, basically it's the same one as here, so. Let's take it from here. Right. 
It's exactly the same. Um, but I want now the selected choice. So selected choice and that selected choice to get it, how we can get it. This is in the question dot um, choice underscore set dot get and again the primary key is equal to request dot post choice maybe this is not very clear to you so first of all we have the question we have a method called get object or 404 this method has different arguments the first one should be a class in this case our class is question obviously if we'll click that you'll get to class inside models.py which we have created right so and we have here inside our um, everything the database basically that's the, the maximum length and the, the the publishing date and we return self dot question underscore text so that's the question class so this is the first parameter the second parameter um, it's not very clear so you have manager you have query set so for me that's the query set that's the primary key and that's um, assigned to the question ID so if you'll click on question ID this is the question ID that is to be entered as an input right that's um, an argument that's to be inserted inside the vote function so once we have the question it's going to be utilized here in the selected choice so for that question we have different choices or answers if you will and again I'm gonna wrap try accept around that line I will have key error because we might have key error and also if this choice doesn't exist so choice dot does not exist so we're going to um, return we are going to render as always request inside our polls folder I'm gonna create details dot HTML page and again the context like every time I forget to add single quotes and that's mapped toward the question whatever the get object or 404 is here yes whatever the question is basically um, but I need another message by the way um, wait hold on we can do like this and we can do um okay we can do here like that we can do error message error message and we can say something like um you didn't select a choice because you submitted without selecting a choice basically so you did not select a choice and for the votes I want to increment by one if you're going to add for example uh, one vote to let's say um, Ruby and another vote is going to be from you or another user for Ruby so we will need to increment the votes by one so um, we can do here else and we can do selected select a choice dot votes is incremented by one and we can save that as well selected choice dot save all right so I hope everything is clear for you uh, the last line that I will need to write is to return HTTP response redirect and um, this class I haven't explained what it does when I first import it here from HTTP um, so let me write the whole thing so we're going to reverse 
and here I need the poles to be equal to the results. And second parameter is args, and that's gonna be equal to question dot whatever the ID is. All right, so always return HTTP response redirect after you deal with any post data. So basically, this is going to prevent posting twice if you accidentally hit the back button, for example. And what I want to do now is to create the URL. Uh, we have URLs by here, but we don't have in our application. So we will need to create it urls.py. This one here is going to define the routing for all the methods we have implemented in our views.py file, right? Um, so don't get confused because uh, we have two URLs. We have URLs in the main project that's already given by Django. And in our application, you need to create it. It's versions empty. All right. So let's do from, uh, oops, from Django.urls, we will import path and oops and from the current directory I want to import views that's very important and the app name is oops the app name is equal to oops poll um, poll app right and then the URL patterns is equal to a list and that list has different paths, different routes. So uh, let's do the first one path here. That's um, if on empty route, you will need to go views.index. That's going to be the welcome page. So views.index and the name here is index. Next, I want the path that it's um, responsible of the details. So path, open here, int a question ID, um, views dot detail, and the name here is detail. Oh, okay, uh, I forgot the, the comma here. <laughs> Um, next, we want path also. That's basically the same. We can do like this question ID, but we have also results. And here, instead of detail, we're gonna change that by results. So I can do like that and change in the same time results. And also we can, oops, can take like that. We can take this path, right? And finally, we want the vote. So question ID, it's the results. We'll have vote, and instead of results, I'm gonna change that by in Control D and typing vote to change both words in the same time. All right, great. So we are done for now. Um, for Django, right? We will need to do here some configurations, um, you know, here to include. Okay, I will do that later. I would just uh, let's close all of that. I hope this is clear for you. That's basically the routes, right? An empty route, um, the, the question ID route, the results route and the vote route. In the next part, we are going to create our first template coming up next.
All right, welcome back, guys. Now we're going to create in our templates, we're going to create the different pages. So inside that templates folder, I will create another folder, I will call it polls. So inside that polls folder, I'm going to create three different uh, files. So index.html, that's the welcoming page. Also, I want um, detail dot HTML and finally I want the results dot HTML right so these are the three uh, different files also in templates outside of polls um, I'm going to do that later uh, yeah okay why not uh, let's do it now base dot HTML that's outside of polls. So if you will close polls, you'll find the base is inside templates folder directly, not inside polls folder. All right, your structure should be exactly like that. And by the way, by default, Django will search inside your main application here for the templates folder. But what I did is I created that global templates folder which is outside of our poll app application. So for that to work, we will need to define the templates folder path inside the settings.py here in the project. So scroll down, down, down till you get to the templates here. This is what we're interested in. So for DERS, we will need to change a little bit. So what I will need to do inside DERS, inside that DERS list, I will say OS, so I will need to import the operating system so we'll do import os right let's get back so os dot path dot join base underscore dir and then uh have here templates and again i have a separate um separate video uh you're going to find a card now appearing on how to do your settings in your django project and how to render CSS, HTML, and JavaScript in your Django project. Uh, just click on that card. The app underscore DERS is set to true. And then um, here we will not change anything. Okay, cool. Back to our templates folder. So let me just close the base first, the details, the result, and let's stop at index.html inside our index.html the first thing that we want always to do is to do block content so block content yeah okay um h1 with a class i'm going to um, give the bootstrap classes actually because we're going to import um, we're going in in base.html we're going to uh, import the bootstrap um uh, CDN. So uh, we're going to do that uh, a bit later. Uh, but for now, I want text center and um, margin bottom three pixels. All right. And here we will close the H1 tag. Reminds me of the, the good old days where I was writing HTML on Notepad. There was no auto completion or anything. Poll questions. By the way, you can fast forward this part if you don't want to write uh, HTML, but I'm going to write it. I'm going to try to do that as quick as possible. So we'll do ampersand ampersand. And I want to check out if the latest, if latest question list div and let's close div so here div i'm gonna give it a class of card margin bottom three pixels okay also be careful of the position of the ampersand should be attached to each curly brace okay so don't do like that it will not work so we'll do for question in latest question list um, here, I want to give it a div, again, div. And here, um, give it actually class also of card body. 
So uh, here we'll give it a paragraph, paragraph with a class of lead. Okay, and let's just shut that paragraph tag uh, like this. And here I'm going to show on the screen the question itself. So the question text. So we'll do that by having double curly braces and inside I want the question dot question underscore text. So this is the question and I want two buttons one for um, if you remember vote now and results. So we'll do that by also having those tag lines um, a with the horizontal reference double ampersand URLs polls detail and here we will have a class of um, I think something not right here. Um, oh, okay, I didn't close that. So let me actually do like this. Yeah, that's that's okay now. And then the class is equal to button btn primary for primary and secondary colors. So we will make it small. And here I will close just the A tag. Here we'll say vote now. I will take that, we'll duplicate it, and we'll change here. So polls, oh, oops, detail. And here results. And yeah, I think this is okay. And um, I'll change the color here. Let's do it secondary. And here also, it's going to be small also. And here we'll change the text to results. Yeah, that's basically it. And here, don't forget, because you start for for loop, you will need to close it with and for. So I have cleaned a little bit. So if here, if for, so for ends with the and for tag, and we want else, so else, we'll say um, something like, like this, something like um, uh, in a paragraph, like no polls available, something like that, all right? And again, as we have closed the uh, for loop with and for, we'll close the if statement with and if. So we'll do that by again curly brace ampersand and if. And also for the, the block, we will close it as well by and block. Now let's move to detail. And um, again, we'll do a block, Let me just maximize that, block content. So first of all, we'll have a link tag or anchor tag uh, with a class of button, button secondary, small, margin bottom three pixels, horizontal reference, the polls index here. So when you will click to back to polls, it will redirect you to this page, the index page, the, the welcome that we have just written. Again, we have H1 class, text center mb3 question dot question text. So this is the question text basically. And um, we have if statement. So if error message will get an alert danger message, um, strong means bold, right? And again, and if we will have a form with the action of URL polls vote question dot ID method post. And of course, with each post method in Django, we will have the CSRF token. So the CSRF token is used to prevent any malicious attacks. And again, in my crash course, and all of the uh, projects that I've created, you will find the CSRF token whenever we do uh, HTTP requests uh, with post method. And again, we will uh, have a for loop for the um, all the questions that you as the, the admin in the dashboard have created. So we have different choices and we will need to display those choices 
on the page here. To do that, we'll create a div with class called form check. Then the input itself, it has a radio type with, a, you know, this circle with a dot. It's called uh, radio. And the name is choice class form check input with the ID choice. And the choice here is um, accessing the for loop dot counter with a value of choice ID, whatever the choice is with the corresponding ID. And simply the choice dot choice text is going to be displayed and we have um, set it to maximum of three choices. And finally, we are ending the for loop. Then input with the submit type. So in order to submit your vote, so that's the input um, input tag, type of submit, value vote, with the class, with the bootstrap class. And then finally, we close the form and we close the block by typing end block here. All right, so this is the detailed page. As far as the results page, again, block content, we will have um, H H1 tag with the uh, question itself. These are the results, right? So we will need, of course, the question and the different results. And to do that, we're going to create an unordered list with a class of list group with margin bottom five pixels. And we're going to um, iterate over the choice set dot all. So for choice in question dot choice underscore set dot all. And we're going to uh, write list item list by list or list item by list item. And inside each one, we will have the choice dot choice text. And we're going to span that in a class uh, of badge badge success in a green color. And also you can vote again. And then we'll shut the for loop and we'll have two anchor tags, both of which are going to take us to different um, different page, basically back to polls or vote again. So back to polls is going to take you to the index page and vote again is going to take you to the details page inside the polls folder and uh, based on the ID of that question. All right, so these are the three main pages here in our polls folder. By the way, we want to create the navigation bar for our application. So what I want to do is inside templates as I've created polls folder, I'm going to create another folder and I'm going to call it partials. And inside partials, I want to create um, HTML file. We'll start by underscore. So it's going to be underscore navbar dot HTML. So here uh, we'll do nav. That's going to be the navigation bar, the blue one. So nav class, and that's basically nav bar, nav bar dark, background primary color with margin bottom, uh, oops, with margin bottom four pixels, right? Inside navigation bar, we will have um, div with a class of container. So div class of container. And here I will have an anchor tag. So anchor a, oops, like this. And the class is really annoying without the uh, completion. I'm telling you, the nav bar brand. I'm gonna call it nav bar brand, and h reference is gonna be forward slash. And here we'll say the Paul Mall, right? That's going to be here on the on the left side on there in the nav bar, as you can see in the, um, here is going to, to be written the Paul Mall right here. Right, uh, just do like this. And that's our navigation bar, these four, four or five lines. And by the way, we have not included the head and body tag in every single HTML file we have included here in the in the polls for all of that.
right? So that's going to be the main purpose of the base, this base page here. And we're going to extend that in, um, in the top of each file, right? So before we do that, let me just explain to you very quickly. It's actually very easy to understand even on your own. So yeah, that's the, um, the bootstrap CDN link. You can get it online. That's the title, the block title and M block. So this is the, um, you will need to include that in the title. So that's the head and the body. So for the body, as far as the body, that's here goes the nav bar. And that's including from the partials. Uh, where is it? The partials and the nav bar file that we have created. Div with a container class. And then again, div with a row class and another div. And inside that, we will have the block of content. Okay. So that's what it is. So I will need to extend that inside each file. So for detail, for example, um, the top here, we'll do um, extends base .html. And that's it. Instead of that's, that's a very good idea. Basically, in Django, you can do that in order to prevent repeating code. So you can write it once and then extend it to multiple pages. So let me just um, copy that line, go to index, we'll paste that here, and we'll paste that here. And let me get this page, let's actually close that. Let's check out, uh, okay, there was an error. That's possible. Let's run that here. Let's see if we'll get any errors. So we didn't have any error. Admin still working okay. Perfect. Pull app questions. What's your favorite game? You can find here that this is like a history, recent actions, right? So we have deleted that. Um, we have added a question, we have deleted it. A uh, question we have deleted it. <laughs> so the questions that we have now zero, we don't have any questions, but we can add that. And you know, we did that before. So um, yeah, let's kill the server. And let's do the last thing I'm going to create the final application for our project. So let's just close the templates. We're done with that. Um, we have the poll app, right? That's the main application that we have but I want to create a landing page application. So to do that, um, yeah, inside here, so you find the pull app, the pull project. So you will do the same thing that uh, you did to create your pull app. So Python manage dot, oops, dot pi, I think I'm tired. Start app, uh, I did that tutorial in one go, so um, do forgive me if you start to feel that I became a bit tired, especially that I'm doing this after work. So, yeah. So, uh, yeah, control L and let's check that out. Oh, by mistake, I created pages. So let's delete it. Landing page. So that's my second application. And let's also go to settings.py and let's add that to our installed apps. Landing page. Let's close that and let's go here to models. Oh, not models.py, by the way. Um, I wanted views.py, excuse me. I will need now to um, to create the function. I'm gonna call it index. It's gonna take request as always. And here I want to render the, the index.html. Then I will uh, render. We will render first here the request. And then, by the way, I want to create in templates another folder. I'm going to call it pages. And inside that pages folder, I'm going to create index.html. This is a second index, by the way, right? So we have index inside pages, and we have another index here in the polls, this one. And we're going to write that index. Um, shortly after we finished with views.py. So request and then 
the route that we have just created pages index HTML. All right, so let's shut that. Um, I might want to do uh, like we have done for the main app here. I want to create URLs, so URLs.py. So I need the URLs to define the routing of the pages. So from Django.URLs, I will need the path, uh, the path. And also from the current directory, I want to import views, URLs, uh, URL patterns, exactly like we did there. So here path with the empty route. Here we'll say views dot index and name is set to index. Right, so that's the URLs. Let's close the models. Um, no need for models. We'll need to write the index.html now. Let me just close Explorer. So again, I want to remind you that this index.html is inside the newly created pages folder inside the templates folder. And that's the main welcoming page. So again, I'm going to uh, extend the base.html here. And again, we're going to do the block. So block content as always and we want to do div so class is equal to card text center and here um we'll say something like welcome what did i do in the welcome to um paul mall Right. Uh, let's do that in h1 tags and let's give that div um, card body class so class of card body let's say this is my first Django project after a long time <laughs> something like that okay we also want to view the available polls so uh, I would do a tag so here, class of btn, btn dark, view available polls. I forgot to add um, the polls index because when we'll click on that, you will go to the index page. And where is that? This is in the polls folder, the index file and block. I think I will need to go to URLs here to do some configuration steps, yes, in the URL patterns. So here, as always, we'll add include. I'll keep the admin as it is, no problem. So the first path is going to be the empty route, so empty route like that, and I want to get it from the, um, basically the landing page. We have the landing page here. So that's the name of the application. So um, inside single quotes landing page dot URLs. So that's the first. And the second path is the polls. So um, with the polls, I need to get it from my main application, which is the poll app. I need it also the URLs. So need again the URLs. So poll um, poll app dot URLs. Don't forget this is inside or wrapped in single quotes. And don't forget this right here. Uh, if you will not do the comma, believe me, you will get an error. Um, let's go ahead and test our application. Run server. Oh, we got an error. I told you. I had a feeling that something was not right. Oh, okay. Yeah, it cannot contain white space. Okay. Right here. 
All right, let's check that out. And we have an error again. Um, yeah, I forgot the equal sign. That's a silly mistake. H ref equal to like that. And I will do like this. And we'll do like this. All right. Pulse is set to index. Okay, also, Pulse is not registered namespace. So let's go to poll app here in URLs. And that's poll app. Okay. So that's poll app and not polls. So I can change this, by the way. I can do polls like that. And I think it will work. So if we'll do like this, yep. That worked perfectly. Sweet. Oh, um, I don't know. I don't like that this we have um, some spaces like that. I'm going to reduce all the spaces because I don't see any other anything possible that um, can ruin the whole thing. Um, your else. Yeah, looks good to me. Um, yeah, let's try that again. Perfect. That's working perfectly. No polls available. So it was the spaces, folks, right? Don't put any spaces. <laughs> I don't know why I did that silly mistake. Um, so yeah, let's now go ahead actually and go to um, the admin. Let's come here and let's add some questions. So let's add a question. Let's say, what is your favorite food? So here we can say burger, right? Save and add another today, now. And let's save that. Um, yeah, okay. What is the best JavaScript uh, frame work? So we can say React view angular save today now and let's save that let's get back to our page let's refresh and we have our questions so what is the best javascript framework let's vote now perfect so react can vote and boom we have one for React, zero for view, zero for Angular. We can click on back to polls. So let's do what's your favorite food. Let's do pizza, vote, one for pizza. Let's vote again. One for sushi, vote, right? And let's do two for pizza, right? So two, one, zero. Perfect, everything is working perfectly. Results, these are the results uh, which are specific to that question. So click here on the poll mall, get to the welcoming page. So all the routes are working perfectly. You be careful with the spaces. That's very important. Uh, that was a very silly mistake from my part. And that basically concludes the show. Thank you so much, guys, for watching the whole thing. If you have enjoyed this tutorial, please do not forget to leave a like. Um, just any comment, any question you have, don't hesitate to uh, drop that in the comments below. And uh, yeah, thank you so much once again, and I will see you in the next one. Till then, stay safe and be well, and I will see you in the next one.